Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Paredes and I'm going to be doing my case presentation on Sandra Santiago. Sandra's presenting issues and the reason for her referral are the following. Sandra was a or is a victim of domestic violence. She is currently residing in a shelter for women um, that suffered domestic violence. Sandra has a history of child abuse and neglect. She witnessed uh, domestic violence from her father to her mother. She uh, had a lot of uh, physical abuse. Um, she recalls her life as hell and that her mother did not pay attention to her. She recalls a lot of punishments, therefore child abuse and neglect. Uh, Sandra also has a history of sexual abuse. As a child, she was being sexually molested by her stepbrother, as well as a history of drug and alcohol use. Although she does share that she is currently clean and sober and has been for the past three years. So what is going on currently with Sandra? Sandra is currently in a shelter for a woman suffering from domestic violence. The shelter gives several different resources in order to um, aid and support a woman that's trying to get away from um, her abuser. So the, it, the problem now is that the shelter staff have noticed that Sandra has been quiet and quiet and withdrawn. And the staff at the shelter are concerned that Sandra might be contemplating returning to her abuser. So that is where we are currently with Sandra. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about Sandra's environment as well as her background. So Sandra is a low income woman of Puerto Rican descent. She does come from a very troubled family with a lot of generational trauma. Sandra's mother also experienced domestic violence, so she did grow up seeing her father beat on her mom. She does report that she considers herself of, of Catholic faith, and she also shared that her religion was what kept her going throughout the um, ongoing abuse she received from her boyfriend, although at the moment she feels like she's losing faith. So she does she does not have any social support from her family. She reports that when trying to talk to her family about the abuse she was receiving from her boyfriend, they, our mom told her, well, what are you doing that he's beating on you? It must be your fault. So she has no social support, social support from them whatsoever. She, Sandra, although all the trauma she has suffered throughout her life she was able to graduate high school and she does have a part-time job at job corp so the two mid-level theories that i would be using with sandra santiago and explaining how they would be beneficial to her are motivational interviewing as well as compassion focused therapy so we'll first go ahead and talk about motivational interviewing. So motivational interviewing is, is explained as an empirically supported approach for helping people change. So Sandra does share with us that this is her third time leaving her abuser. The first two times she did go back to him, although this is the first time she's in a shelter seeking help, which is a good sign for her. Sandra shows a lot of ambivalence and wants to change her pattern and leave her abuser for good. So am I would help her work through that ambivalence and make a final decision, which would be leaving her abuser. Am I can be beneficial as at as it has shown to help women suffering from domestic violence. It works by helping women identify goals as well as an increase their self-efficacy and control of their lives. So Sandra's past um, has a lot of abuse, a lot of neglect, a lot of emotional abuse, physical abuse. So she is definitely 
lacking that self-efficacy and she probably feels like she has zero control over her life so mi would help her build up that confidence and that self-efficacy and that control that she lacks in order to make that final decision of leaving her abuser for good so this is why motivational interviewing would be a very good um theory for sandra The second theory that we will go ahead and discuss is compassion focused therapy. So compassion focused therapy, also known as CFT, is becoming a very popular form of therapy similar to CBT. CFT focuses on behavioral change and a focus on shame and self-criticism. CFT teaches the individual to have compassion, acceptance, tolerance on themselves and their trauma. CFT also teaches self-worth, which will be something very beneficial for Sandra. So if we look back at Sandra's history, she comes from a lot of abuse, a lot of emotional abuse, sexual abuse, a lot of trauma, generational trauma that she has witnessed. So she also shares with us that she never got any compassion for being abused by her either her stepbrother or her boyfriend. And into and she actually believes that it is her fault that all of those things happen. So what compassion focused therapy would would show her how to have compassion on herself and understand that you know those things happen to her but she is still worthy and I think that that's a very important thing for for Sandra because she has a very low self esteem at the moment, and we need to build her up in order to get the change that that she needs. And the change would be to eventually, once and for all, leave her abuser to get her life in order and either get a full time job or apply for financial aid so that she is able to take care of herself without having to feel like she needs to go back to her ex-boyfriend. So from the two theories talked about earlier, there were strengths and limitations. For motivational interviewing, one of the limitations was that the articles on MI reported change, but it was not statistically significant. Um, the strength was that the woman that did participate in complete therapy reported stage of readiness to change, as well as lower levels of depression. For compassion focused therapy, um, there were also not a lot of articles focused on women um, suffering from domestic violence or um, that completed a CFT uh, treatment. And the, the strength was that the articles that were found on CFT showed significant change, significant change from people following through and finishing uh, CFT. So lastly, my ultimate recommendation and additional things to consider when working with this client. So ultimately, I would recommend motivational interviewing theory for Sandra. Motivational interviewing was actually implemented in a domestic violence shelter, and it showed an increase in readiness for change when the woman contemplated leaving the abusive partner. So there is data that shows that implementing um, motivational interviewing in a shelter for abused woman will work. So I believe that motivational interview would be the best um, theory to implement in her case. So another thing to consider with Sandra is her history. She does have a lot of trauma prior to the, the abuse that she received from the boyfriend, the domestic violence. Apart from that, we have an extensive history of child abuse and neglect of child sexual abuse. So that is, I believe that that is a huge part that will come to the surface when working with Sandra 
And I also think that that would need to be addressed in order to move forward and address the part where she needs to make additional life changes and eventually leave the abuser. I believe that all of that history is a big reason why Sandra is in the place that she is now in her life. So that would be something very important to consider when working with her because it, it will come to the surface and it will have to be addressed. Of course, that once all that trauma is uncovered, um, I will also think that it would be very beneficial for Sandra to continue with additional psychotherapy and even considering psychiatric help. And those are all my recommendations and considerations for Sandra Santiago. Thank you.